we want to introduce you to the brand new line of industrial coffee grinders that we are selling here and have had uh, manufactured for us here at BC Coffee Roasters. And this is entitled the uh, Canyon Grinders. This is our smallest line of industrial grinders. It comes in, it's called the uh, uh, BC 66 Grand with stand. It also comes without a stand where it's uh, just this tall and it sits on rubber uh, uh, legs and you can put it at the end of a table or counter and you can grind it to a much larger uh, uh, bucket or uh, what have you uh, when you're doing serious uh, amounts of grinding. Uh, one thing about this machine, it has a hopper that can be removed and replaced with an optional bigger hopper at an additional cost. There is a latch for opening the hopper and closing it. I want to show you how easy it is to use, how easy it is to set its settings. This, as I said, is called the, the BC66 Grand. We have a larger one that's in a 220 uh, volt. This is a 110. The 220 is, uh, we call it the BC88 Grand. And we'll talk about uh, the capacity, the ability. Uh, this one is able to do up to 40 uh, kilograms uh, per hour. So basically you're looking at uh, about 80 some pounds. The other one is uh, capable of doing about 130 pounds an hour. So we're going to get started. We're going to show you the settings. We're going to show you the uh, various levels of the grind and try to show you some close-ups of the uh, uh, aftermath of the grind and, and help you to see that there's numerous uh, settings available on this model. So again, as I mentioned, this is the BC66 Grand. It's actually capable of uh, doing anywhere from 44 to 88 pounds an hour. As I mentioned, this is the one with the stand. If you are using a bowl, my personal recommendation was, would be to get a bowl that's above where the uh, um, where it dispenses out so you don't get any of the uh, coffee grinds uh, uh, shooting out. So either hold it up or get just a taller, maybe a, a seven inch or something like that uh, container. As I mentioned, uh, the hopper has a uh, little valve here you can open up. And uh, you can either pre-measure what you're wanting to grind into the hopper or just pull the, pour the full amount. Oh, by the way, before you pour it in there, adjust the setting to uh, what you want to grind. And as you'll notice, it'll lock down uh, basically at, at the 12, which is zero. And if you want to do it at uh, setting number one, two, three, or four, uh, that's your decision. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what each one of those settings uh, amounts to as far as uh, the grind. Basically, uh, if you were to do it at one, that would be about espresso setting. If you were to do it uh, uh, at two to three, it would be closer to the setting for uh, a paper filter. And uh, we'll go on a little bit to explain uh, also how uh, each setting, and we'll even show you how each setting uh, uh, grinds. Rather than just tell you, I decided to go ahead and show you. So I'm going to show you what the one setting is, and then we'll go up from there. To turn it on is simply turning on the power here. Obviously, before you turn it on, you want uh, the grinder uh, to pour into its container or bag, and so you put that up there. I'm just going to turn it on for a second so we get just a small amount of grind. Okay, then I'm going to pour it into a container. And then I will let you see on the video as well as we'll try to get some pictures of what uh, the number one grind is. I don't know how well you can see that. 
but it, it, it's basically a nice espresso. I will say this, the machine probably doesn't give justice if you want to do Turkish. Uh, we're going to go ahead and crank it down to about a half and see if it comes anywhere near close to where, because Turkish is basically powder. Um, no, it's not, uh, well, it's pretty close. It's not as gr uh, fine of a grunt as what you're going to see with uh, a ditting, but keep in mind that uh, the cost is nowhere near what a ditting costs. It actually is, I don't know if you can see that, and uh, if I take the powder, it's not uh, real far off from a Turkish. So I would say a half might uh, suffice for a Turkish. The beautiful thing about this is you can finely tune it. So even though I had it set at a half, let's tighten it up just a little bit more. Keep in mind one thing, if you tighten it up too tight to where there's no grind, it may pop the circuit breaker. And these do have a resettable circuit breaker on the back that you just uh, reset. So I've got it ground down pretty far, so if it does pop off, you'll know uh, what I did wrong. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I guess you honestly, in all honesty, it does produce what would be the equivalent of a Turkish grind, which is pretty uh, amazing. That's the first time I came to that realization. As you can see, it's like powder sticky on my, my fingers if, if the video will give it any justice. So I would say somewhere around a half, uh, and you could really refine it slightly because as you can see, between zero and a half or 12, and a, uh, which is, counts as the zero in this case when it's tightened uh, to a half, there's about 10 settings in between that. And so as I mentioned, one would be great for espresso. My feelings are that two would probably be best for if you're doing uh, single serve K type cup um, servings. I'm just going to crank that on for a second. I guess I should have done this to begin with. It's a little bit more coarse than uh, the espresso. Uh, actually, some people might consider that an espresso there at two. Um, so, somewhere between two, two and a half. I'm going to crank it up to two and a half. Yeah, is that, that's right. Between two, two and a half, probably closer to two and a half is going to be what you want for uh, the K type single serve uh, machines for your uh, making your own cups. All right, let me pour all that in. We're going to go up to the next setting. Not to confusion, I believe that somewhere between. Uh, two and a half, I'm sorry, somewhere between three, let's just do three. Three, yeah, three would qualify for uh, a drip coffee, um, perhaps really fine drip coffee. Let's take it all the way up to three and a half. And I should have lifted that up. Yeah, the three and a half is still going to do a nice drip coffee maker. Uh, let's see if I can show you that. I don't know how well you can see that with the sliding. Uh, but we're going to keep going up and we're going to show you. It'll get up to the point to where uh, cold brew, there'll be a setting maybe uh, three and a half to four, and maybe actually four and above. Let's take a look. Yeah, four may be what you want, or four and a half. Let's try four and a half. Yeah, for cold brew. It's not uh, super, super thick. Yeah, four, I'd say, to four and a half would be great for cold brew. Uh, the question now comes up, uh, which is about the um, coarsest grind you would have, would be for a French press. So let's try five and see where that takes us. Yeah, five is going to be where the French press is, and I would not probably go any higher than five. Uh, but as you can see, and, and in between each number is a about ten different micro settings 
you could do so you could fine tune it to however you want it to go I'm going to go ahead and oh just to show you another thing because you're probably thinking well okay I've seen little teeny grinds what about uh, as far as how fast does it grind through a pound of coffee and let's see uh, and of course the, the grind setting is going to make a little bit of a difference so let's take it back down to one of your more common drip settings and we're going to go ahead and turn it on oh by the way until I get uh, the new uh, lids for this I don't want the coffee going everywhere so I'm just going to Put that over top of it and hope it doesn't fall off. to grind is fairly similar to uh, a ditting which we also carry in case you want to name brand roaster and there's what our typical grind that was at about four so that would be a nice uh, um, for a typical pour over or a uh, drip coffee maker so you can see it does it relatively fast Next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how easy it is to clean it, and it should be cleaned after use each time. First and foremost, before you attempt any cleaning, always unplug the unit. Never attempt to clean a unit while it's plugged in. It's a pretty shiny stainless steel. These things are heavy. I, I'm going to guess it's in the 60-some pounds, but I can weigh it for you if you'd like later. Uh, the hopper comes out so it can easily be washed. It's all stainless steel. Uh, you can spray down uh, a cloth or put a light mist of glass cleaner on this and wipe off all the uh, components. One of the big things is cleaning the inside where the burrs are. And, and I got to question you how often do you do that and how easy is it to do that with a bun or a ditty? I say it's not easy at all. With this, it's completely different. Let me push that in, tighten that hopper down, and then all you have to do is loosen this, and uh, this pops out, okay? As you can see, there was a little build up here, which I probably could have got had I ran it a little longer. The entire burrs come out, that simple. There's the inside of the burr, and then uh, here's the other side. And remember, it is unplugged because you never on in your life want to. And as you can see, if I put keeping that bag crunched up to the top, which I shouldn't have done, it actually clogged the, uh, which is why there's this much coffee down in there. Um, it would ne normally never do that if I didn't, would not have crammed the uh, bag up to that. So uh, you can either take a shop vac, suck it out, uh, um, or just a, a little brush and brush it. And you don't have to do this every day how, because how often do you clean the inside burrs of your ditty or your bun? And then when you're done, you put that back in. It's got it's spring loaded. So when you go to close it, you just push this all the way tight. You pop that in and then you tighten that down all the way. And it, it, as you can see, it has free range of movement on the adjustments and you've got a clean machine and you're ready to go uh, uh, for your next uh, course. So very simple, very easy, the extremely heavy duty. The BC66 comes in a 110 version. It's capable of doing about 40 to 80 some pounds per hour. The BC88 is capable of doing 88 to well over 180 pounds per hour and that's only comes in 220 because the wattage is quite high on that and if you're going to be producing that much coffee in a shop you'd want 220 anyway um, so there we go i hope that gives you some kind of an idea and uh, enjoy great coffee